a video review of the Circa Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know if you're considering a stay at the Circa. We're gonna talk about the common areas of the hotel, the gambling areas, the restaurants, the pools. I'm gonna show you the neighborhood around the hotel, what's outside on Fremont Street. Then I'm gonna show you inside this room, a king bedroom, and then I will end with my conclusion talking about the pros and cons of this hotel. There's definitely some things I like about it, but there's also some things I don't like, so stay tuned for those. The Circa Hotel is located in downtown Las Vegas at the west end of Fremont Street, directly across from the Plaza Hotel and the Golden Gate Hotel on the other side. It is the tallest hotel in downtown Las Vegas and the first new hotel built down here since 1980. The parking situation here is kind of interesting. Their parking garage is called the Garage Mahal. It's located across the street from the Circa, right Right next to the Plaza Hotel. Parking for hotel guests is $25 per night, $7 if you're a hotel guest and you valet park instead of self park, so pro tip right there. Save yourself some money and valet park. Now the part of Fremont Street that the Circa is connected to is the Fremont Street Experience. That's the part of Fremont Street that has the Viva Vision LED screen above on the top. There's nightly entertainment here. This show goes every hour. It's a pretty cool, pretty lively place. Right out in front of the Circa along the Fremont Street experience. They have a Circa bar where you can get some margaritas or other drinks. Not too popular on a cold evening when I was here. There's also a barbecue lunch truck that's parked outside. And one other notable thing just out here on Fremont Street is the ABC store directly across from the Circa Hotel. This is a great spot to get um, quick eats, snacks, drinks, things like that, all your necessities. You'll find them a lot cheaper here at the ABC store and a bigger selection than in the hotel gift shop that we'll look at in just a moment. Heading into the hotel from the main valley area, you'll see there's three check-in desks here in the back and there's some artwork behind them that actually changes every once in a while. It kind of has those rotating wood things and so you see different things back there. It opens up into the main casino floor. It's a pretty neat casino, lots of slot machines, lots of table games. There's one big bar on the other side by the Fremont Street Experience called the Mega Bar. This bar is quite huge. One of the things that Circa is certainly most famous for on their ground level casino floor is their sports book. It is an amazingly huge sports book. And if you go up on the second store of the casino, yes, the casino here is two floors. You can get another bird's eye view of the sports book. It is massive. The Circa is also proud of their table games, that their dealers are also dancing dealers. So they help add some energy to the gambling experience. The other bar on the ground floor right across from the check-in area is called Vegas Vicky's. Why is it called Vegas Vicky's? Well, because right next to it, there's a huge neon sign called Vegas Vicky. Uh, it's from the 1980s. Her leg still moves up and down. A pretty neat piece of classic Vegas history that they kept, uh, they didn't keep, but that they restored and put here in the center of the Circa. And then just below Vegas Vicky's is the hotel steakhouse known as Barry's. Now I wanna point out that the Circa Hotel is a 21 and up adults only hotel and they're really serious about it. They check IDs at every entry point from the outside, from the the parking garage so make sure you have your ID with you and don't plan to stay here if you have anybody in your party under 21 because they won't let them in. The only place that kids under 21 can go is to the hotel steakhouse. Now heading up to the second floor of the casino, this is where you would come across this bridge if you parked at the Garage Mahal. The first thing you'll see there is a coffee shop where you can get coffee, pastries, that sort of stuff. The High Limit Gaming is up here as well. Right next to the High Limit Gaming, there is a Chinese restaurant that has some really neat waving cats. Just next to the Waving Cat restaurant is Saginaw's. It's a 24-7 Jewish delicatessen. This is also the entrance to Stadium Swim, the hotel's fancy pool that we'll check out in just a moment once we're done with the casino walkthrough. Next to Stadium Swim is the big gift shop up here. This sells a lot of swim attire, more high-end clothing, though this one does close earlier. They close at nine o'clock on weekdays. If you want a hat, you'll find them at Lids, and there's also a burger restaurant next to the sports book. And finally on the ground floor, right below the elevators going up to the second floor casino is the hotel's main gift shop. This has usual hotel gift shop stuff. How much is a bottle of water? About three bucks. Okay, so that's it for all of the second floor. Now you might be saying to yourself, Chris, wait, 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 what about Stadium Swim? Swim. Aha, the entrance is on the second floor, but it actually just leads up to an escalator that goes up five floors to the fifth floor. So let's go ahead and take a look at Stadium Swim. It is this massive 
pool complex. It's really more of a pool club than just a swimming pool because you do have to go through a security checkpoint to come in here. So you can't bring a lot of outside things. They serve alcohol here. They've got two big bars, a grill. They've got swim up bars. You can rent um, pretty neat cabanas. Those are gonna cost you money. The day beds are gonna cost you money too. The general admission just gets you in and gets you into the water. Uh, if you're here in a busy time, they've even got a casino here as well, so you can gamble while you're out at the pool. And of course, there's that super big screen where you can watch the game on. Overall, a really neat pool, particularly for sports fans. When you do get up to the guest room floors, it kind of has this brown and blue vibe to it. Nice lights on the side. Just a pretty good, rich, also continuing the classic Las Vegas feel up here. Now that we've seen everything around the hotel, let's check out the inside of one of the rooms. This is room 1835, a standard king size bedroom on the 18th floor. Come on in, let me show you around. As you come in the room, we pass the bathroom. We're gonna check that out in just a moment, but as you can see here, there's a nice king size bed, neat kind of blue leather on the back, a headboard that's illuminated, two nice lamps on the nightstand. Over here, there is a big kind of blue corner sofa. You can easily kick back and relax on that. Some art there on the wall, 777. I hope that's some winnings that you get. There is a little tablet here in the room that uh, it's currently not on because there's actually a power outage in the hotel right now. And so the hotel is running on generators, but there is power in the room, just not to everything. There's a little uh, brown seat here in the corner with an interesting table that looks like a thimble. Uh, my room looks out on Stadium Swim. You saw that earlier when I was giving you the walkthrough in the morning. This is what it looks like at night. And this is the view outside the window in the daytime, so you can see a little bit more clearly. Stadium Swim, 7.30 in the morning before anybody else has gotten there. The Plaza Hotel over here, the Gold Golden Gate right across the way. You can see the mountains of Vegas over there and the Fremont Street experience, that big kind of dome thing right here. Okay, looking back in the room from the outside, neat circular mirror over there where you can see me. Hey, hey, big screen television on the wall right here in a nice frame. And underneath that big screen TV, there's this nice big wide bench, which works well to put your luggage on if you don't want to sit on it. Also a nice little area to put shoes underneath. I like that. This is the desk in the room. Nice big wide desk, neat uh, golden ice thing there. That's my In-N-Out Burger cup from earlier. I stopped in Barstow on my way here. There is a small refrigerator, refrigerator in the room, two complimentary bottles of water in there. Uh, no mini bar in the room, which I like because I never go to mini bars anyway. The closet is illuminated. Uh, it's this brown wooden closet. The left side's illuminated where the clothes are, the right side's not. There's a, oh, that's cool. There's a steamer, there's a safe, um, and then nothing else down here. This looks like this might be where the mini bar would go or used to be. Um, there's a really nice, illuminated mirror by the front door as you walk in. Need to make sure I look good. My shirt's not too wrinkly. Maybe I should have steamed it before. Little place where you can maybe put a drink by the front door. And then if we go into the bathroom, the bathroom is really nice. This might actually be one of my favorite parts of the room. We'll start with the sink area. There are two sinks. There is one sink right there. And then you can see there is a second sink right there. Two big mirrors and it's actually the area is so big, there's actually a seat in the middle. Um, so for ladies that spend extra time getting ready in the morning, that's in front of this. Some neat wallpaper too. This really kind of feels like old Vegas. And then it has a big walk-in shower, glass door that opens up. It has a fixed shower head. Uh, the soaps, I don't like these kind of soaps, these common soaps. Um, I like my own little bottles because I'm always paranoid somebody put something in those. Uh, and uh, just our super big area, little uh, towel on the floor for the mat. And then this is where the toilet is, kind of all in the same room with a little small piece of art back there. What, is, what does that say? Uh, now is my favorite place to be. You know, back on the sinks, I always like to point out the brand of soaps in hotels, and these have no brand at all. There's nothing on it. And they also have a little sign over here to let you know not to bring uh, the towels to the pool because they provide them there. And the mirrors also have these interesting little buttons on them. What do these buttons do? Uh, nothing. 
maybe because there's no power, but I would assume those buttons would probably uh, illuminate the mirror. I also want to point out the lighting controls in the room. They're pretty neat. They are these little uh, panels like this, and you can set it for candlelight or happy hour or bright or sconces, or you can turn everything off, or you can just have a night light. So that is pretty neat to change the lights in the room. There is a similar one uh, by the front door. The one by the front door, in addition, this is how you would set uh, your privacy if you want service. Uh, also, if you want to turn on and off that entry mirror that we saw there, that's with the button right there by the door. And the air conditioning is a pretty similar panel right here, pretty simple. Um, I like this uh, where you can just turn it on like here and then you can set the fan speed. Sometimes these things are like super complicated hotels, so I'm glad they made this one easy. Fellow explorers, now it's time for the review and I'm joined by my special guest, Topher. He's my traveling panda brother. I'm Chris, he's Topher. We always rate hotels on a scale of one to five Tophers and the Circa Las Vegas Hotel is going to get four Tophers. That's right, so let's talk about the pros and the cons as to why this hotel got four Tophers. Pros. It is a nice new hotel. Everything here just has a vibe of newness and cleanness. The room itself is big. It's like 900 square feet, lots of room in here, and it just felt really fresh. I like also how big the bathroom is, uh, good water pressure in the bathroom, good air conditioning in the room. I slept quite well. <clears throat> the blackout curtains here on the window, those worked quite well. I didn't even notice the sun was out this morning. Of course it was, and I had to get up eventually. It's also a nice compact property. Even though the parking garage is across the street, it's a short bridge to walk across to get down to the check-in area. The elevators are right next to the check-in area. You get to your room pretty quick, so pretty quick to get in and out of this hotel. Unlike some of the mega strip resorts where you might spend 15 minutes going from the parking garage to the check-in, and then 15 minutes from check-in to your room, that's all real close together here the Circa. And a really neat pool, the Stadium Swim, which I'm sure is a lot busier in the summer than in the winter when it's only 37 degrees outside. If you're wondering why nobody's in it when I showed you the scenes, that's why. Okay, so now let's talk about the cons of the hotel. Why didn't it get five Tophers? Well, one of the, I think, appealing points of this hotel to many people is that it's a 21 and up adults only hotel. And I actually see that as a con, and not just because I have a traveling princess two-year-old daughter who couldn't join me for this trip because she couldn't stay here, but because they check your ID every time you go in and out of the hotel. That gets really super annoying from the parking garage out to the Fremont Street Experience. I hopped over to the ABC store to get my breakfast for the morning outside for two minutes. Gotta show my ID every time to come back in. It just makes the hotel um, feel like you don't wanna leave and come back because it's so hard to exit and come back in again. Also, I wish the security guards who were checking IDs were a little bit more friendly. They were quite unfriendly. Maybe that's what it takes to be a security guard, but I wish they would have said something like, oh, welcome back, good to see you again. I think I saw the same girl at one of these doors like five times because I was going in and out so much shooting video. And <clears throat> at that point, she basically just stopped saying anything to me, just scanning my ID, mm, you know, but it would have been nice to be like, oh, welcome back, you know, just have a nice greeter there at the door. That being said, the rest of the staff was all quite friendly and nice. The check-in staff, the other people I interacted with, just the security guards I think could use a little bit of friendly training. You know, and speaking staying on the property, I mentioned there are a lot of amenities here, but it's a downtown hotel. It's not a big property. There are not nearly as many amenities here as in a Las Vegas Strip Hotel, which are quite huge and massive. And so that also leads me to the con of the price. Uh, I felt the Circa is quite expensive, uh, particularly for what I paid, not because there was a convention in town or anything. I just think it's because the Circa feels they're new and they can charge a premium. Uh, $200 for the room plus parking is double what Resorts World is charging in the same week. They're charging $100 all in and the Virgin Hotel $62 all in for this midweek in December. So um, same week, different prices twice the price here for Resorts World, that's a little bit of a bitter pill to swallow 
for, I would consider, less amenities here at the Circa than at Resorts World. A couple of cons related to the room, although I mentioned the air conditioning was good in the sense that it was cold or hot or whatever I wanted to be, it was noisy. The fan was quite loud on it. Uh, so actually when I'm doing this video, I had to turn it off because it was so loud. The good thing about the loud fan on the air conditioning was it drowned out the noise from the Fremont Street experience and Stadium Swim last night. There's significant live entertainment often out on the Fremont Street experience and that got quiet at about midnight, which is when I went to bed. But if I was trying to go to sleep at nine, I think I would have had a hard time in this room facing the Fremont Street experience and the pool. Maybe the other side is a little quieter, but over here there was a lot of loud music helped to be drowned out by the air conditioning noise. The bathroom I mentioned, I liked the bathroom. It had good water pressure as well in the shower, but I wish it would have had a handheld in addition to just the rain head. Also, I felt the tiles on the floor for a little slippery. So um, for anybody, you know, maybe ask if they have those like rubber things you couldn't put on because the tile down there did feel a little bit slick when I was in it. Now, would any of those things stop me from staying at the Circa again on another visit? No, none of them are deal breakers, perhaps except the price. But if I was looking to stay in downtown Las Vegas, I think the Circa is where I would choose just because it is new, it is nice, it is fresh, it does have this classic Las Vegas feel in a modern hotel. So overall, if you're planning to come to Vegas and you want to stay in downtown, then I think you should definitely consider the Circa. If you're going over the Strip, well then you might want to check out my video right here about some of the best luxury hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. I've also got reviews of Resorts World and others coming up soon. You'll find those maybe right here if they're done or if not in the playlist below as soon as those come out. Well, as usual, I won't say goodbye because we will see you in the next video.